Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Mornings with the Masters. We devote ourselves to the Lord daily with you. Sadly, we are rounding out with day eight of our devotional in the Bible app titled, You Are Not Behind, How to Start Building a Life That You Love Today. Um, I, I thought this was a really fun series. If you missed any of these, feel free to go back and listen. It felt kind of um, real, like it... Uh, it talked about real personal things that we may be keeping behind closed doors because as Christians we're, you know, like, oh, I, I don't I don't wanna, you know, talk about being discontent because I know I'm supposed to be content in Christ, but I love that this one kind of opened up about those types of topics. Anyways. Sad to see it go, but we're going to finish strong with day eight. There's a link to it in the description if you guys want to follow along. And as always, I'm going to read the scripture, and I'm also going to pick with the Devo. The scripture is Psalms chapter 27, verse 13, and it says this, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The devotional is titled, Love Your Life. And it says this, it can be challenging to celebrate someone who has what we want, especially when it feels like we have nothing to celebrate ourselves. But even though celebrating can sometimes feel like a burden, choosing to celebrate others and ourselves is one of the best ways to overcome the cynicism we feel toward our circumstances. We should celebrate today for the same reason, to remember and rejoice in what God has done. It doesn't always have to look like a party or an event, but celebration helps you invite others to acknowledge a moment that matters, a moment that you don't want to forget. Celebration invites intimacy and requires vulnerability. The ability to celebrate is a discipline we have to fight for. We need to look for the goodness of the Lord today and help others do the same. Time tends to slip away when we don't take a moment to reflect on all that has happened. But we don't always have to rely on other people to mark moments of importance. We can celebrate our own as well. Here are some reflection questions to ask yourself. Number one, what was good this past month? Number two, how did I show up to my life? Number three, where did I see God move? And number four, what am I hopeful for next month? Over and over again, God's word calls us to remember. Remember who God is. Remember what he has done. It's in the remembering that proves he is trustworthy. It shows us he has been and always will be with us. It helps us get our hopes up. Yeah, and I just have two quick things I want to say. Um, the first of which... Um, I would absolutely recommend going to do those questions. I want to do them almost live with you right now, but I don't want to be spilling out all my tea all over you right now. I, um, but yeah, like what was good this past month? It really challenges you to see the good because one of your first reactions may be like, oh yeah, this and that, that's it. But no, like spend five minutes reflecting on that question alone. Like these are things that we can't brush off as believers. Like scripture, just like what the author said, scripture is clear. It says, remember what? Like, remember what he has done. There are people that would even build like these little like altars or pillars or the moments of remembrance of what God did in that moment. And we quickly forget. And you see the, the disciples quickly forgot. You see it, I think, in the Gospel of Matthew, whenever the, the masses came to Jesus and he multiplied the fish and the bread and he fed them, the disciples first said, what are we going to do? We have only this many fish and this many loaves of bread. What are we going to do about it? And Jesus said, watch out, watch this, right? Literally, I believe the next chapter, they come back again. And what do the disciples say? Lord, we have to send them away. We don't have enough to feed them. He said, have you already forgotten what, what I can do, what I have done? Have you already forgotten? And that's us. That's number one. But number two... Um, Tor and I talk about this a lot. We talked about it yesterday, actually, at dinner. We were just talking about getting competitive with the enemy, not allowing your life to be his playground. I'm going to say that again. Don't let your life be the devil's playground. That's something that we, we want to push back. We want to resist, and the enemy must flee. And so in your life, whenever you feel that resistance to celebrate other people's victories, other people's wins, other people's blessings. You feel that urge where you just want to be jealous and hey, I'm, I, I get it. I, I experience it a lot. When you want to be envious, when you want to covet, 
And it's ugly. It's not fun. We don't like feeling that way. We can't help that we do sometimes, but you don't want to celebrate them. I love, and this is going to sound a little aggressive and I, I kind of apologize, kind of don't apologize for it, but I love the slap in the face it is to the enemy or our sinful nature when we say, I know that I want to retreat into myself and gossip about this, this moment to feel bad about myself and not celebrate that person's victory or win or blessing, whatever it may be. But instead, I'm going to say that God's goodness is not zero sum, as in it's zero to 100 and that's it. Where if someone gets 50, it only leaves 50. No, God's goodness is everlasting. He's not withholding from me. And I'm on my own journey, living my own walk and my own life in God's will for my life and his purposes for my life. And I'm not going to think less of myself because someone else is getting something that I desire. Instead, I'm not gonna give my sinful flesh what it wants. I'm not gonna give the enemy what he wants. I'm gonna resist. I'm gonna push in and I'm gonna celebrate that person. What a slap in the face it is to those things. I love it. We get super competitive with the enemy because anytime I feel like living in sin, anytime I feel that temptation, that urge, I catch myself and I say, oh, this is when I need to turn. I need to repent. I need to turn from. And I get so excited about those moments. I know it sounds cheesy and I apologize for that. Not really. But I just love the idea of where I have, I have an opportunity to be weak in my flesh, but instead I choose to be strong in his spirit and respond to the spirit and say, no, I'm going to celebrate that person. Um, and it just is such a faith booster. It's, um, yeah, get competitive with the enemy. Rejoice in what God is doing, not what he is not doing. And be open with God. Talk to him about it. Run to him as, as his child. We love you guys. I'm praying out. Lord, I love this devotional. Lord, we love you. Lord, I, help, I, I pray that you'll help us find the space to be honest with you, to answer those questions about how are we showing up in our own lives, but also where are you at in our life? Are you everywhere? Can we see you everywhere? Can we see your goodness? Or does it feel like absence and silence? God, help us to open up to you about where we're at. And most importantly, God, help us to resist the enemy and he must flee. Help us to ignore the temptation of our sinful flesh and press into the spirit that you've given us. We love you, Lord. You are the best, Lord. You are so good. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our worship. I just wish we could stay in this mindset forever, God. We apologize how quickly our hearts turn to other things. We love you, Lord. In your son's heavenly name we pray, amen. Amen, y'all. Now's that perfect time to break out the worship music, break out the journal, and continue pressing to the Lord. Don't forget that you are God's masterpiece, and don't forget to love you. We love you, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Adios.